We're going to look at verses 10 through 17. The title of the message tonight is Going with Christ After the Hard Cases. Going with Christ After the Hard Cases. Let's read this scripture first and we'll get into the, the explaining of it. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and couldn't in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And uh, he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days to which men ought to work, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite! Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him." This is a tough case here. This is a tough case. Do you, do you answer me tonight with an amen? Do you, do you believe that a lost person will spend eternity separated from God in a literal hell? Do you believe that, uh, by the way, do you know that you've been set free from sin and uh, it's, uh, it's punishment through faith in Jesus Christ? Amen. Then it would, it would be somewhat foolish for us, really, if we, if we don't share the gospel to set people free, to set people free. We've been set free, and uh, we know people who are in bondage uh, with Satan and will go out in eternity without, uh, without Jesus Christ forever and ever. And uh, we thank the Lord so much for us. And so it's another uh, exhortation tonight for us to go about why Christ came. And he said, as, uh, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. And so uh, do you know someone? who you might call would be a hard case. Maybe it's, in, maybe it's in your family, a hard case. Someone you say, well, I just can't talk to that person. Maybe the person that's been resistant for years. Maybe it's a person that is so full of um, worldly intellect um, and, and, and knowledge that uh, uh, they can't reach them. They just got all this, their ideas and their philosophies and all that. Maybe somebody's been absolutely in bondage in drugs and alcohol uh, for many years. Maybe if somebody got burned at church and don't want to have a thing to do with the church ever again. I like the old preacher who said, did your mama ever burn the biscuits? Yeah, well, did you swear off biscuits the rest of your life then? No, you gave her another chance, didn't you? And there are times where we get burned at church. Amen? Sometimes we get burned at church. Sometimes we get burned at each other. But I'm going to tell you something. That means we swear off each other, swear off the church. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we could give it another chance. I like biscuits. And uh, every time I try to make them better, and uh, that doesn't always work. Uh, maybe somebody that, you, that they think that they've just gone too far. And let me ask you this. Are you a hard case? I, I hope not. Uh, the, those of you, uh, the multitude that's here tonight, um, that there's not anyone in here that would be called a hard case. But maybe you think that. But let me tell you this. Every case is not a hard case for Jesus Christ. Every case is an easy case for Jesus Christ. And what we need to do is go with Christ and not just go by herself. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Here this lady was actually absolutely possessed with a demon, a spirit of infirmity uh, from Satan. Look at verse 11 again. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could not know, in, in no wise lift herself up. Hard case there, 16. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound... Lo, these 18 years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. Um, not only that was a hard part of it there, because, you know, he's, he's dealing here with, with, of course, it's Christ, all right? Nothing too, too, too much for Christ. But we're going to confront people, and we're going to come across people that, that yes, indeed, demons are alive and well today. 
they're not well, but they're alive, okay? And uh, yes, they do still yet possess people. Yes, there are spirits that come into people's life. And you, even Christians allow uh, sometimes a, a wrong spirit in, in their life. And that's what David, David had to pray. And Lord, create in me a clean heart, renew a what? A right spirit within me, you know, and uh, there's times that we, we, we go through that even as Christians. And so we're going to confront people that uh, have a spirit of infirmity or a spirit of, 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 uh, uh, of Antichrist. There are many spirits of Antichrist. We already studied about that in, in, Sunday, in Sunday school, about the end times. Uh, but uh, but th not only that, but, but Christ was resisted by an indignant religious leader now he's the hard case really he is a real hard case look at verse 14 uh, and, at, and and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people there are six days in which men ought to work and them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day he was more concerned about the laws uh, uh, than he was about the person had no concern for her whatsoever resistant there so when you go with Christ after the hard cases the first thing you find is this if you go with Christ when you go with Christ there's the key all right when you go with Christ you will find that indignation will be defeated indignation will be excuse me intimidation will be defeated again verse 11 and behold, there was a woman which was a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, bowed together. You know what? Some, uh, what is intimidating here is this spirit of infirmity. The spirit has come from Satan down in, in, in verse 14. Um, that, uh, that could cause an intimid intimidation. When you go out and you go to somebody or you're prompted by God, the Holy Spirit, to speak to somebody, there's an intimidation that's going to be there immediately, all right? There will be that intimidation. But if you go with Christ, there will be no intimidation. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you go by yourself, you say, well, it's all on you. It's all about you. It's about whether they're going to reject you, whether they're going to punch you in the nose, or whether they're going to be mean to you, or whether they're going to be yourself. You know, and that, that, that intimidation that's there. But if you go with Christ, all intimidation will be defeated. Is there something or someone in your life that intimidates you from sharing the gospel? Is there something there? Well, this was an impossible condition. It was an impossible condition. 18 years, 18 years, but it was not impossible for the Lord. But we're going to look at this case here, and we're going to see three things about it. It is an impossible condition. There was an insensitive crowd, and there's going to be an inevitable conflict, all right? Those three things that happened right here with Christ uh, and, and this lady, uh, it was an impossible condition. It was, uh, it, it was insensitivity in the crowd. And uh, it, hey, Christ, you're going to have a conflict here. It, somebody's button heads with you already, all right? So same thing for us. When we go and share and look uh, uh, on people, uh, we're going to have a, a real problem if when we go by ourselves, And we will say something like this, that's just too hard of a case. That's just it, too impossible. Uh, the crowd is really not uh, uh, sensitive. It's just insensitive. Uh, the, the people that I'll be speaking to, or maybe people around all that. Um, the, this, this week I got to share Christ with the family, and uh, there was no intimidation there at, at all. There was a, before I started sharing, there was a thought of, well, I wonder, you know, if they're going to be insensitive. I wonder if there's going to be a conflict. I wonder if there's a, you know, a stiff arm, all that. But when, I, when it comes time to share, I went with Christ. I said, okay, Lord, here we go. And, uh, and let me tell you, that intimidation was absolutely defeated. It would be the same for you. And it doesn't, you, you won't be having this impossible, impossible condition in front of you. Because you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Christ, it, it, there's no there's nothing too hard for God. And the same thing for hard cases. There's nobody too hard for God. All right? At all. Now, that doesn't mean they always accept God, but they're not too hard for God because God's still going to be ruling over them. Amen? He's still in charge 
of them whatsoever. Go with him instead of going on your own. The impossible, this, even though it, it may seem like an impossible condition, maybe it'd be, the people really uh, insensitive. And uh, you know what? If I do, there's going to be a conflict. Maybe you know for sure there's going to be a conflict. I believe that Jesus Christ knew who the crowd was or around him. And there was a lot of religious folks there. One of them spoke up about it, and there was a, a conflict. But he was not intimidated, neither shall we. So if we go with Christ, then intimidation will be defeated. All right? Go with Christ. Hang on to his coattail. You know, uh, you know walk side by side. He doesn't push you out in front of him. He says what? Follow me, and I will make you... Oh, if I follow in Christ, I'm not intimidated. It's, it's like when God gave his word to Joshua, when he said, Joshua, when you cross that river, uh, every, every place that your foot it's, it, 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 uh, treads upon, uh, that's going to be, you know, it, it, you're going to win. And there's not going to be one person be able to stand up against you. Do you think he had some confidence there? Think intimidation was gone? It seemed like an impossible at first, but then all of a sudden the intimidation is absolutely, absolutely gone. And yet, you know, it's an inve inevitable conflict. But let me tell you something. When you go with Jesus, when, he, when, when Joshua first was kind of surveying the, the whole area and he went that, during the night over to Jericho and out came uh, the angel of the Lord, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the captain of the host of the army of God and gave him that confidence. And boy, he went right for it. He went right for it. We can go with Christ. Go with him after souls. And if you go with Christ after hard cases, intimidation will just absolutely be defeated. Second thing is that involvement, though, involvement will, de will be demanded. Christ, he, he told us to get involved. He, he, he gave us a commission and he gave us a commandment for us to go and share the gospel with everyone as we can and uh, teach them how to do the same thing. But involvement will be demanded. Look at the involvement here in verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. When, hey, let me tell you, when Jesus Christ lays hands on you, he'll straighten everything up out of your life. Amen. He just, he will. It just seems, if everything's so crooked in your life, some of us just bowed under all that. Let me tell you, 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 you get involved with Jesus Christ. He'll straighten you out. Amen. Uh, how many here did Christ straighten out? How many here are Christ still straightening out? <laughs> okay. We're all, all, all there. But the, you can't send others to do your personal soul winning. Your personal uh, soul winning work. And so we have soul winning classes and all that. But it all boils down to this, personal soul winning. Personal soul winning. When I was in college, they had soul winning classes, but it wasn't called soul winning classes. It was called personal soul winning classes. And that means it's up to us. Nobody else goes. You can't don't send somebody to do what you are supposed to do uh, of your own. That commandment is given to every individual Christian uh, to go and share the gospel. Uh, but look at the involvement that he had there. First of all, he saw her. It said, said verse 12, and when he saw her, he saw her. Um, then it's the, another involvement is that he called her. He didn't just ignore her, okay? He saw her. He saw her condition. And you know Christ, his compassionate heart, went out to her and he called her, made an effort to, for her to realize, I see you. I know what you're going through. Pay attention to me. I've got some good news for you, okay? Not the bad news that we talked about this morning, but the good news there. So he saw her. He called her. And then this verse 13 says, and he laid his hands on her. He reached out to her. He laid his hands on her. And so when we go with Christ after souls, we can pattern after here in the scripture. So in the, a hard case here, yes, intimidation will be defeated, but involvement is going to be demanded. I mean, you know, he told us to go. He told us to teach and preach. He told us to baptize. He told us to teach them to do the same thing. He gave us that commission. And, it's an, and, and it, that says, you know, you've got to be involved. I, I think sometimes the Christian's problem is that we, we, are, we think that thinking about soul winning and praying about soul winning and giving towards soul winning is soul winning, but it's not, okay? Those things are involved in it, but that's not what, that's not soul winning. And so if we just think about it, that's, that's you know, it's just like, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, I, you know, I think I've got a million dollars in the bank. I can think all I want to. The dominion is there, all right? 
and uh, but 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 just thinking about soul winning and and winning souls is, is not the same thing. Um, you can't lead somebody to Christ without being personally involved. You cannot lead anybody to Christ without personally being personally involved. You have got to do some talking. You've got to do some approaching. You got to look. You got to see. You got to call. You've got to. Be in touch, okay? Reach out and touch somebody that talked about the phone. And that's so that, that was encouraging right there to get on the phone list there. Uh, you can call. You can call folks, not only in the church, but I want to remind you, if God laid somebody in your heart. They're not here in this area. And give them a call and say, God laid you in my heart, and I would like to share with you one more time, you know, and uh, that uh, Jesus loves you and he cares about you or he wouldn't have laid you on my heart, okay? So when you go with Christ after souls, not by yourself, not on your own energies, not on your own powers. And I think that's the biggest intimidation is that we think we've got to do it rather than just truly saying, Christ, you told me that you would be, you told me to do all this, but you told me this, that you'd be with me always. You told me if I follow you, you will make me fishers of men. If I follow you, I'm going to be a fishers of men. I don't know. He said so. And so that takes that intimidation away. Intimidation would be a defeated involvement, though, is going to be demanded. The third thing I see in the scriptures here is indifference. Indifference is going to be denounced by our Lord. Indifference will be denounced. In verse 15 and 16, the Lord then, in verse, in verse 14, is when the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because of Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said, told folks, you know, hey, hey, come around any other day but Sabbath day. We don't come on the Sabbath day to get healed. What an indifferent person, all right? What indifference is there? But verse 15, the Lord then answered him and said, in other words, indifference will be denounced. Thou hypocrite, Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? Indifference will be denounced. In a uh, uh, read about uh, a soldier during World War II and uh, it's a bombed out cities and he had gone by a bombed out church and, and there were pieces of uh, the statue of, of Jesus Christ and, and um, it, while he could he did his best to piece all the pieces back together but he couldn't find the hands the hands were completely destroyed and so he, he fixed, the, fixed the statue up as best as he could but then he hung a sign there and the sign said this he has no hands but yours he has no hands but yours we've got to be involved and uh, to be indif indifferent if Christ is going to denounce that uh, the religious leader uh, the ruler of the synagogue if he's going to denounce him in front of everybody for being indifferent, uh, what is it about us if we're indifferent? Uh, there will be a denouncement there. Uh, he said there'd be a, sh a shame, and he would be ashamed. And so uh, uh, sometimes uh, many not only become indifferent, but they become a naysayer. What is a naysayer? Someone says, oh, I just don't do that. That's just not my cup of tea. That's not my calling. Where, where do we get that thought? Every Christian is called to be a soul winner. Every Christian, true Christian, is called to be a soul winner. And I believe every true Christian will be involved in soul winning and personally in doing it. Um, I just don't want to spend that time. Um, and or those who people who get absolutely upset when they are encouraged to do it through preaching or whatever it may be. Would you come go with me? And they get upset with it. Uh, we're going to have another lesson. It's going to be another message. I got good news for you. Uh, uh, next Sunday, we're back on Acts again. And maybe you'll feel a lot better. How's that? No, you won't feel better. You won't feel better until you know that when you come back rejoicing, that's feeling better. When, that's feeling better when you come back. I want to encourage you to do that. Bring in your sheaves with it. Bring in your harvest back with you there. Belonging to a church that wins souls does not mean that you are a soul winner. Amen? I go to a soul winning church. I want Desert View Baptist Church to be more of a soul winning church than ever before. And I, I think there needs to be a revival 
of that. I need to be a refreshing that come to that. And we talk about in Sunday school, actually a resurrection of that uh, in, in Desert View Baptist Church. It starts with your pastor, of course, but the pastor's doing his best to encourage you to come right, right along and, and do the same. Hey, there's nothing better. There ain't, there ain't nothing better than to be used by God to do something that will last for eternity. No matter what you do on this earth, it's not going to last. It's not going to last except those saints that's done for Jesus Christ. And that's it. That's the, that's the, all the rest of us going to be wood, hay, and stubble, but that's which is to be gold and silver and precious stones. All those saints which to be done under the will of God. And so uh, nothing's better. Nothing is better. Uh, Christ left heaven to do so. We ought to leave the house to do so. Amen? And so anyway... <clears throat> Uh, uh, indifference it, it concerns the Lord indifference really concerns the Lord and uh, he's, in other words what have you done with what I've given you and um, it, it's well I buried it uh, that concerns the Lord big time it concerned him about this religious leader here too first thing he calls him is this and first thing he says to him is this thou hypocrite you, you, you double faith. You're religious on the outside, but you're full of dead men's bones on the inside. You know, you look really good on the outside. You make long, long and pretentious prayers, but you're a hypocrite. And boy, he, he calls snakes in the grass and everything. He really uh, denounced them. Um, let me ask you, to what do you spend all your energy? Or for what do you spend your energy. Some some people spend more energy on nitpicking little things, things that happen in the church. More people will spend more energy in that, and it consumes them to the point they won't do what Christ has told them to do. Amen. In the church, at home, at work, or wherever it may be, some people get so involved in the little bitty things, make such a big thing out of it, and guess what? It gets in the way of the best things. It really does. So we've got to be careful of that spirit that also makes us so involved in, in other little things instead of the big things that God wants to be involved in. So indifference does, it concerns the Lord. So don't let things interfere and, and cause an indifference in, in your heart. Indifference is contrary to logic. Indifference is contrary to logic. And look at the logic, he says in verse 16. Um, and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, uh, uh, excuse me, back to 15, uh, thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose, lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to the water? That's logical, right? But indifference is contrary to logic. You'll do it for an animal. You're not going to be happy and rejoicing about a person being loose from bondage. It's just, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I find in today's society, especially in our, our leaders of our nation, that there's not much logic left at all. There's not much at all, okay? It just does not make logical sense. It just doesn't. And, but why would, does it continue? It's a thing called blindness. It's a thing called indifference, really. Um, tornadoes. I, I, I'm glad that tornadoes uh, are not warned by the way that some people warn people about hell. Uh, well, I called them up and the line was busy. You know, we uh, we'll called the neighbor and says, uh, uh, listen, I would like for us to get together sometime with coffee and let's talk about weather when a tornado's coming, all right? That, that doesn't, that's not logical, is it? That doesn't make sense. But a lot of times, Christians will go about the same way, and we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll, you know I, well, I called and left a message, and so when was that? Well, that was two years ago. You know, we'll call again. Call again until till they answer the line. Or we, we go about it and say, well, you know, we'd like to have you come over sometime and all that. Then you talk about them going to church, and that's about it. But so winning means to be involved to the point of presenting Jesus Christ. The answer to their life and eternity is uh, very important. Just like I shared with you about the illustration about the house being on fire. I mean, you, you, you go in and you share and, and, and warn them because you see their need more than being intimidated or being being indifferent uh, just walking on by and so and by the way that's love love supplieth the needs 
of another, regardless of what they say or what they do in return whatsoever. So intimidation will be defeated when you go with Christ. When you go with Christ, involvement is going to be demanded. He's going to say, hey, listen, I'm with you, but I told you to teach and preach. But I'm with you, okay? Indifference will be denounced in our own life as well as, as others. And then the last thing tonight is this. Impossibilities will be dismissed. Amen? I can't be a soul winner. It's just impossible. No, if you're a Christian, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you, which strengthens you. Look at verse 17. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then not a possibility anymore. Not a hard case anymore. Nothing. So what happened was, first of all, criticism was retired. You know, then when he said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. Criticism was retired. And confidence, though, rose. There's the difference. People rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Confidence in them, in him. Confidence in him that came from how he stood up to the religious leaders, what he had done in the miraculous uh, uh, healing of the lady, of uh, the denouncing of the spirit and of Satan in that case. That's a tough case. Let me tell you something. It wasn't too hard for him. It wasn't too hard for him. And he says, go with me. Go with me. And so think about the hard case. Think about that hard case in your life. And maybe, they, maybe you're the hard case. Okay? Could be. Jesus can handle it, though. Jesus can handle it. Think about that. Oh, boy. Lord, why'd you lay that person on my heart? You know, could have been anybody but him or her. Okay? And it's such a hard case. Uh, they'll, 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 they'll listen to anybody else but me. They won't listen to me. But if God lays them on your heart, that means you are going to be involved. Amen. He said, I've tried it before, and they rejected me and all that, and so I've done my, my part of it. Lord, you have said somebody else. If the Lord lays that person on your heart again, then God knows what he's doing. We've got to trust him, and we're supposed to do what he's supposed to do, and take him at his word that he's going to go with us, and he's going to empower us, and the, and, and the promise of receiving power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be a witness. So uh, it reminds me of a fellow, his name is Daniel Richmond. We've talked about him and prayed about him. And Daniel, I know you'll probably be listening to this uh, on the archives and uh, as you travel in your truck. And God bless you, my brother. But Daniel, I remember Daniel Richmond was what we might call a hard case. Uh, this is back in Papa Bluff, Missouri. Uh, he was a guy, he's a big old guy. He's a big bruiser. And you don't want to mess with him, okay? Uh, you, you just wouldn't want to mess with him, especially back in those days. And uh, he always was trying to get into, he always dreamed of being a hell's angel. And, uh, and he went through all the motions and everything uh, to be a part of that crowd. He ended up in prison. And uh, God grabbed a hold of his heart and softened his heart. He had a religious background, upbringing by his grandma and others in the Pentecostal uh, uh, background. And, uh, but it just didn't take a place in his heart. And uh, he, was, he, was a tough, he was a tough case, a hard case. God, and by the way, one of the reasons he went to jail is because God grabbed a hold of his heart and started changing him to where he went and uh, uh, like turned himself in for some things he wasn't even charged for. And, uh, and, he, and he actually went to jail. He says, because I owe, I can't pay, but I can pay this. And so he, he went. And, but he was softened by Jesus. He was a hard case softened by Jesus Christ. And Daniel, I hope I got all those details correct there because I know how soft you are now, you big teddy bear. Amen. He loves the Lord. And he gives me a call. He's driving down the interstates and oh, he's a truck driver and he's listening through the scriptures. So he's got something to say what God showed him in scripture and all that over all these years. And we've been out here going on 25 years and, uh, and still yet have that. And uh, he st see him at the truck stop. He stopped at Triple T uh, truck stop and went up and had coffee with him. Had some pictures of him. And so uh, if you want to see Daniel, I'll just show you. He's a man that, a big old burly guy, but all of a sudden he's just as soft uh, as can be. That's what of the Lord's work in his life and appreciate that. But as you say, you know, uh, to go to him and go to him in prison, there's a lot of hard cases in prison. We used to go drive halfway across the state to go and visit him in the prison and share Christ and, and encourage him and, and for him to do the same thing. 
And I shared with you once, once before about uh, the, the hills, talking about the Hells Angels. Uh, uh, the Hells Angels started a, the farthest north outpost in Fairbanks, Alaska. And uh, I drove by there. They were having a big con rock band and all that on the flatbed out in front celebrating the, the opening of the farthest north Hells Angels place. And they opened up a motorcycle shop and some other things that was a, a cover up that they're there for. Uh, dope and prostitution and stuff, and it was it was a it was a rough area. And the first thing that came to my heart was they need to hear the gospel. I said, "Yeah, I said, you need to share it with them." And that's a hard case, folks. Amen. That's a hard case. But who told me to do it? Well, I encourage our teens and our youth group to get together. We'll go over there and pass out tracks. And the parents wasn't quite for that. And, uh, but I I'd, 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 I'd promised the, the young people that, uh, that I would do that. That's a God laid on my heart, and I, I'm going to do that. And I, I know I've shared it with you before. Let me rehearse it just real quickly. Um, I was really intimidated. I, I really was. Uh, up to the door, I was intimidated. But at the point that I said, I'm going to open this door, I was then following Christ. Up to then, I was in my own nervousness and all this stuff. And I had some tracks. It's called Hell is No Joke and a whole stack of them. So I go in there and uh, walk up to the counter. And here's a guy. I mean, here's a rough, burly looking guy. And I go to the counter and I said, uh, oh, excuse me, are there any Hell's Angels here I could talk to? And he looked at me. He goes, uh, yes. And I said, well, I, I'd like to sh share with him these, these tracks here. And, uh, and uh, the tracks say that hell is no joke. And the guy's name was Gary. And um, he, he said, uh, well, I, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. And I said, uh, well, what I'd like to do, if I could then, uh, it's just uh, to leave these tracks here. When the guys come in, that you uh, allow them to pick these up, and maybe they'll pick them up. And, and uh, if I can give some to these ladies over here sitting on the motorcycles, I'll, I'd like to do that. So I gave them some. And, and uh, so I just, just, just kept talking. And so I went back to the counter, and I said, how if I can place these right here? And he says, he says I cannot think straight. I cannot think, and I'm ready, and he's ready now to throw me out on my nose, you know. And I cannot think straight. And he slammed his hand down on a bunch of paperwork that he was doing, receipts or whatever it may be, and they just went flying everywhere. He says, so I'm just going to leave. Where'd you go, Lord? One down, how many left, you know? I mean, you know, he didn't throw me out. He could have. He didn't throw me out, but he left. And, and, and so then, I, that, that's, the, that's when I gave the tracks to the other ones. And, and then, so I said, I'm going to leave these tracks right here on this deal. Well, that the guy's name was Gary. And you know what? His son ended up with some of those tracks and some others that other people was concerned about him. And he got saved. And he was a part of the church. As we left, he became a part of the church. And we were that. Listen, God is a big God. He's a big guy. And that's, those are hard cases, folks. Let me tell you, that's, that's hard cases. But when you go with God, not on your own, doing something for God, you go with God, intimidation will be defeated. Involvement's going to be demanded. Indifference will be denounced, though, but impossibilities will be dismissed. Amen. So think about that. Think about the word. So tonight we're going to give an, uh, offer an invitation to all the multitude that's here tonight. We're going to offer an invitation. Why do we offer invitations? Why do we offer it? So we can see if the message got across? No. Why do, why do we offer invitations? Sometimes preachers make a mistake of gauging how they presented the gospel by the, by the response to the altar. Uh, that could really, really mess you up. Okay, and as Eric shared this morning, uh, I did what Jesus told me to do, and that's it. But why do we offer an invitation? It's, it's really is modeled after Jesus Christ giving invitations. Amen. He said, "What? Follow me. Come unto me. Amen. Go ye. I'll be with you." So we offer invitation to you. A hard case. If you're a hard case here tonight, say yes. Lord, save me and change me. If you're listening out there um, you know, on our video series, um, if you're a hard case and you figure that you're just too hard, it's just impossible for you. Let me tell you, nothing's impossible for God. And uh, he loves you. And you are an easy case to him. You are a hard case to yourself. And so I want to encourage you to say, Lord, save me and change me. And then thank him 
and then come to say, I'm trusting in Jesus Christ. So come, if you stand with me, this, come, come tonight to this altar. And those of you who are listening on our video series is that come to Lord Jesus Christ. Let us know. Let us know if this, after uh, watching this video uh, tonight that uh, you have given your heart to Jesus Christ. Let us know. Uh, call Desert View Baptist Church, write us a note, whatever it may be, and I'd love to pray with you about that and, uh, and hear your testimony. But we're going to give you an opportunity to respond right now as we sing a song. Brother? Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance. <laughs> you to go with Christ and win souls. Come back rejoicing. Share that. It would encourage them to, uh, the others to do the same. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your attention tonight. Brother, dismiss us, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message tonight, knowing that all things are possible through you. Not through us, not something that we do, but something that you do through us, Lord. And we thank you for that confidence to dismiss all the pessimism, to all intimidation. You, Lord, you give us the confidence um, to, 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 to do for you what you want us to do. Lord.